inside out. He became physically, he had to get in better shape. He had to be a little bit quicker. He's already a good athlete. He trimmed down a little bit. Learning that five technique that moves past offensive line, working around double teams. He's become a better football player. He has a greater knowledge of football on the defensive line, have, and, and uh, playing now across two positions. Go get me Mario Williams and move Red Bryant back on the inside as is now a better defensive tackle than he was when you moved him to the outside. In addition to Brandon Meebane and then on the other side, Chris Clemens. You telling me that's not a front four that you wouldn't... It would, that's not a front four and that's not a secondary that the Seahawks would have in place where you'd line up against the Cardinals with Peyton Manning at quarterback and you'd feel darn good about your chances the two times a year you're going to face it. All of a sudden, it's not that intimidating to me as a Seahawks fan anymore. And we're talking about Peyton Manning. Because Peyton Manning's only going to work and be intimidating if he is 100% healthy. Peyton Manning doesn't play if he's 85%, if he's 70 if he's 95 This isn't that type of injury. He's 100% or zero. So if he's playing, if he's got the helmet on, and he's down there, and he's under center, and he's flapping his arms and doing his Peyton Manning stuff, then he's 100%, which means he's going to be the vintage Peyton Manning. That doesn't intimidate me if I've got the front four that I just mentioned. You go out and get me Mario Williams in free agency. Move Big Red back, in, uh, back inside next to me, Bain. And then on the other side, you've got Chris Clemens. And then on the back side of that, you've got that Pro Bowl secondary that we just talked about. I'd line that up against Peyton Manning, Larry Fitzgerald, and Reggie Wayne twice a year and feel pretty good that I could win both of those football games. That front four you mentioned there, if the Seahawks can get Mario Williams into the fold, that would be one of the top defensive lines in the NFL, and you put that in front of that secondary you just mentioned that had three pro, pro bowlers last year, that was able to make tons of plays, forced turnovers last year with a, with a defensive line that wasn't getting the premier pass rush that Mario Williams would bring. Chris Clemens, you know, he's had a good years. Red Bryant coming off the edge, more of a run-stuffing DN. If you get him back to the inside, Mario Williams on the edge, that pass rush would just make that secondary so much better. Mm -hmm. And that secondary is already sitting back there with not only three pro bowlers, but three very young pro bowlers who are going to be in the fold for years to come. And I agree with you. Once, If Peyton Manning should come to the NFC West, that makes it that much more important for the Seahawks to get that premier pass rusher, not only just to put the pressure on Peyton Manning on the opposing quarterbacks, but also to take that pressure off the secondary, which would only make them that much better. Yeah, and the other, and you, and you mentioned all of those things about defense. What I'm hearing is core. The secondary is the core. They're young. They're here for a while. They're under your control for a bit. It's like what the Mariners have done with acquiring players like Justin Smoke and Montero, uh, drafting a guy like Ackley, guys that are going to be the key of your team, the, 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 the foundation of what you're building the keystone of, of, of what you're what you're erecting, so to speak. Ha uh -huh, he said it. Foundation, core. You bring in Mario Williams, and for the next four, five, six, whatever years of that contract, if he's performing, it, then you've got one of the elite pass rushers, and, and, and let's hope he can stay healthy. You, you just re-signed Red Bryant. He's already a part of that core, because you've, you've seen that you can play him inside and outside with it effectively. Brandon Meebane, you've got him under contract. So you've, you've got the core. You're strengthening your core. You're strengthening your core. I by no means am a physical fitness expert, but what they tell me about them people who work out is that the core is where it all starts. So then, you, you, and, and what is it? It's, 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 it's two moves. It's re-signing Big Red, and it's breaking the bank and bringing in Mario Williams. That's two moves. And then defensively, you're, you're set. Then you get to move on and, and, and tackle the quarterback situation, and you still have... Uh, you know, Matt Flynn out there uh, on, the, on, the, on the free agent market that you can go after. You can have Mario Williams and Matt Flynn and make those pickups and it costs you probably roughly maybe just a little bit more than what Peyton Manning would have cost you and you still can go out and beat hypothetically an Arizona team that has Peyton Manning, has Larry Fitzgerald, has Reggie Wayne. 
I think there's only one thing in this conversation about how strong this defense could be that we may be conveniently kind of glancing over through our Seahawks green colored glasses that we're viewing this. I'm an objective member of the media. I don't know what you're talking about. And that's that linebacking core. Mm. We talk about what Mario Williams could bring to that D-line, how that could in turn help improve that young Pro Bowl caliber secondary. But the question marks are going to come from that linebacking core where they're going to have to re-sign David Hawthorne. Leroy Hill is a huge question mark right now. We've heard about what he's gone through legally as well as with his contract. That is going to be the big question mark is who is going to be in there in that linebacking core because we can't just go from the D-line to the secondary. we got to have three guys there in the middle who are doing their job. And I think, you know, we saw the emergence of a guy like K.J. Wright last year. We saw the Seahawks' ability. The thing that imp has impressed me most about this front office staff is their ability to find guys like K.J. Wright later in the draft, fifth, sixth, seventh round pick. I really need some more of that stuff you got me last week. <laughs> That's this deadline. It's a really uh, commercial on the internet uh, that just popped up. Uh, I thought you were playing a drop. Thank you, Xfinity. Thank you. Not only do I pay you way too much money every month, I'm just kidding. You're a great sponsor and we love it. Uh, I, I know exactly what you're saying, and that's... I'm willing to, to, to table that it, until we get to the draft, because free agency is going to reveal so much of what your draft is going to look like for, for the... That board is going to change 